Hi there, welcome to this Blender breakdown video. In this video, I've been basically sent a blend file from one of the students on the Complete 3D Artist course, asking for a little bit of help with some of the texturing. So this is a render that they created, and this is the textures that they've come up with. Now, for the most part, I'm not going to really discuss modeling. Um, I've made a little adjustment to the tomato slice. Um, I've not adjusted anything else other than just removing some of the modifiers from some of the objects or applying the modifiers on some of the objects. So just to break it down, this is the uh, the image that was sent and they pretty much mostly wanted help on the bun itself and the burger itself. And this is the solution that I've came up with here. So like I said, I did a little bit of remodeling to the tomato slice just to make the sides a lot flatter because you've got this uh, kind of bump map here or some kind of displacement on it that was just a little bit, it just didn't look quite right. Uh, the bun itself I've made more glossy. I've gave it a slight kind of tint when it comes to the, the colors on it. For the most part, the thing that makes this is the bump map and the, the kind of slightly glossy specular highlights on it so if I zoom in a little bit there you can see we've got these little dots uh, we've got an overall kind of bumpiness to it the burger itself the burger itself I'll admit is actually a little bit tricky it's really hard to get this texture right in blender and I would say the main reason for that is because it relies so much on displacement it's really hard to do displacement in blender at the moment if you're building it all in the uh, the node editor. Uh, lately I've been using a program called Sub Substance Designer quite a lot and it's really amazing when it comes to designing displacement or height maps and for baking in your textures and your normal maps for uh, game assets. So I definitely recommend maybe looking into that because I, that would probably be the tool that I would go to if I was texturing an object like this. Now in saying that this is by far not perfect. Um, there's things that I'm looking at on these textures just now that I've not done yet. Um, but I think this is a good starting off point for just improving your textures a little bit. So let's just break down some of these textures. Let's look first of all at the bun texture. So if you're at all familiar with the, the, uh, the Complete 3D Artist course and you've looked at the texturing section, you'll probably be pretty familiar with most of the tools I've used here. So let me just go through them and we'll have a wee look. Uh, so first of all, the thing I wanted to get done first was the little dots on the uh, texture. Now let me just quickly bring up some of the reference I was looking at here. So this is um, the image that the student actually used to model their object and they did a pretty good job. The only thing they've not done is the lettuce and looking at the lettuce the way it is there, you know that's a tough modeling job there. I'm not entirely sure how I would actually approach that so we're not going to look at that. Here's another image that I found as reference for the bun. Um, one thing I would suggest is if you want to do the burger bun with the sesame seeds on it, do the sesame seeds as a particle effect. Model one, two, three different sesame seeds and apply them as a particle effect. Um, a great tutorial video for finding out how to do these kind of particle effects is Blender Guru. It's the classic um, donut tutorial that everyone appears to be doing all over the internet. Everyone loves the donuts tutorial. Anyway, they apply some, well, they call them sprinkles. I call them hundreds and thousands. So they apply them to the top of the donuts and that's exactly the approach I would take with these sesame seeds. Um, he definitely explains that process really well, so definitely check out Blender Guru's videos for that. He's also got some great videos on the uh, principled shader, which is the, the shader that I've used in this video. And I only did that because the student had actually already set up his original textures using the principled shader. Otherwise, I would have probably just used the diffuse and glossy shaders as usual. Uh, let's see what's the next thing. So, oh, okay, right. So. Instead of using that bun, I've used this other bun, just because it's a simpler material to try and get right. So what I have here is essentially these little bumps 
that you are picking up these little highlights, these little dots, these little bubbles almost on the surface. First I created those using this Veroni texture or Veron Veroni texture. Let's go with that. Um, I've plugged it into the texture coordinates. I've used object texture because by default if you use the generated texture it kind of stretches around your object which I think is one of the issues on some of the textures that were originally on it. I've used object mapping which makes it just a little bit more even over the surface. I've kept the mapping all to the defaults and I've just changed the size of that texture. I've then plugged that into a color ramp and the color ramp basically takes it from these black dots with the white and gets rid of a lot of the greys and just leaves these little white dots that if you look on them they've got a little bit of grey and a little bit of uh, pure white in the middle and that gives you a nice little bump. I plugged that through a couple of colour ramps. Very subtle, as you can see, just to get a very subtle bump. And that's mixed with this noise texture, which again, into a colour ramp to make it black and white. Uh, that's been added together to make this very subtle bump effect into a normal map. So you can see that very clearly there, you can see what the normal map looks like. And that's just plugged into a bump map, which is then plugged into the normal of the principled shader. I then basically copied and pasted those exact same nodes up here and plugged them into this color ramp. And in order to create this color ramp, I've basically just taken these colors and sampled them straight from this image. So one side is the darkest pixels I could find, the other side is the lightest pixels I could find right on the highlights. And that simply creates this texture. Quite nice. The only other change I made to this principled shader from the default is I just bumped the roughness down a little bit just to give a little bit of a sheen, a little bit of reflection on the surface. Now you can get away with adding a little bit of extra reflection on this even although it's red because the normal map kind of breaks up your reflections really well. I don't have any displacement on this object because it's it's really too flat. There's not there's not any real need to have displacement on any bumps that small. Let's move on. The next object here is this tomato and I just want to show you exactly what I've done here. So I've actually just pretty much modeled this tomato slice. I've used the exact same model that the student himself actually used. The only thing I did was I tweaked, tweaked the geometry a little bit before there was, um, it was pretty much this exact shape. It was a little bit more undulating. Um, he had appeared to use the, the uh, proportional editing and it had been set to random and he had obviously moved up one or two verts on it and made it really bumpy. So it really wasn't a flat tomato slice. It was really, it was almost like a crisp and the fact that it was so, it wasn't very flat, so I tweaked that a little bit, I gave it some really sharp corners using some control loops and I inset the top a couple of times and basically just generally flattened it off a little bit. This object is actually two different shaders, it's tomato slice and tomato skin. The tomato skin, um, incredibly simple, it's just a principled shader with a colour um, sampled from one of the reddest parts of it and I've just taken the roughness down a fair bit and I don't know if I've actually bumped anything else up. I think I just took the roughness all the way down. One thing I would say is on this particular piece of reference we have these little droplets of water on it. That's something that's really easy to add. You can pretty much just put your 3D cursor on it and add a sphere and then just give those spheres um, the last shader and I'll give you a, a decent, pretty quick way to do these water droplets. You could just um, duplicate them all over the surface or again you could use a particle system to apply those all over the surface. Um, and that's pretty much all I did with that. The tomato slice itself, again it's just a texture been applied to the generated texture coordinate this time, not the object one because if you do that you get multiple copies. I've just adjusted the scale of it slightly and move it into place to fill up 
copy object and I moved the location to get it into get it to the right space as you can see a little tweak takes it off um because this is going to be hidden inside it I've not tweaked any of the settings here I've just kept them the way they are and I think that looks not too bad you could definitely get away with that um like I said you wouldn't even really need to texture the top and bottom of it I just wanted to show you that little tip um, I decided not to do anything with the cheese texture because the cheese texture was pretty simple anyway. Um, I didn't really see the point of adjusting that too much. So let's go back to object mode here. So this is the cheese texture that the student has already used. Um, essentially just a couple of colour ramps plugged into a mix node and plugged into the subsurface colour color and the subsurface radius and a cheese color for the actual base color. The only thing I would say about this is the subsurface scattering is quite render intensive. If I was to take the subsurface scattering all the way down and say plug this cheese color here into this base color. I mean this renders a lot more clean. It's a lot faster. I don't see much of a difference and render quality between the cheese now and the cheese the way it was before although the colors probably uh, not quite the way it should be maybe more this set up here um i would maybe well i tend not to use a specular i would tend to keep that at 0.5 and just bring the roughness down a bit more make it a little bit more glossy other than that i wouldn't really tweak the cheese too much i'm going to keep that subsurface scattering off just now um, just so it renders a little bit faster. Um, and finally, the bun is the last bit. Uh, not the bun, the, uh, the burger itself is the last bit. So, this is um, kind of tricky. If you look at this burger, you can see it's really rough, it's really distorted. To model this, you would have to use either a really high poly mesh and do some sculpting, or you would have to use some uh, displacement. I've opted for displacement. I'm using experimental mode here. If you turn this off, you pretty much lose um, all this displacement. You can see it's got totally smooth again, pretty much. So uh, let's go back into experimental mode and I'll show you exactly what this allows me to do. I then go into material mode and scroll all the way, all the way down. You get this extra setting and settings for displacement. You can get true bump or both um, because I'm using a normal map as well I'm just going to set this to true and in my subsurface modifier now because I took off the subsurface modifier that was on it and applied another one once I was in experimental you get this adaptive setting and that means when parts of the burger are further away from the camera they get subdivided less and close up areas get subdivided more that means that your displacement modifiers are going to look a lot better close up. So let me just undo that and put it back in again. So you can see the surface of that is a lot more undulating than it was before. Unfortunately, it's not as heavy as it is here, which is a little bit disappointing. I find it pretty tricky to use the displacement map on this. It just seems to just needs a lot more tweaking than I would like for using displacement. I'm going to go into local mode here so you can see the burger itself here. So this is just pretty much an all over basic texture that I've used here. I've used a couple of noise textures. So we have this one for the large details and this one for the low details. They both go through color ramps. Um, they get mixed together using this linear light. So we've got some low pits and some high pits. Um, I've plugged them into this multiply node, which basically makes the darks darker and the lights lighter. Pretty much almost works like a contrast. Um, it doesn't really affect the blacks as much as it affects the lights. And uh, let's see, we have this multiply node, which is again mixing this additional noise texture. And that's pretty much just for the the color of the burger itself. So this is the color of the burger. I plugged in, go through a multiply node, and then into the final 
node. Again, I've, I've tweaked the roughness to make it a lot more glossy. Uh, let's see this color ramp for the bump map. So this is a normal map for the actual burger itself. So very rough and a very similar map and plugged into the displacement here. So this is the displacement on the object. And uh, in order to see the displacement working, you have to go in and out of render mode every time that you make any changes to it. Uh, so just as a little experiment, let's take this multiply node and multiply up to like 3.7. No change happens there. A bit of change on the actual um, color map itself because they're both connected to the next node. If I go out textured mode or render mode and go back in again. You now see that the the displacement has increased quite a lot through that node. Um, and that effect might be what suits you more. So you can use that multiply node to increase the highs and the lows. And the way this works is the high levels or the whites get pushed out, the blacks get pushed in. The way this color ramp works is it takes all the dark areas and makes them the lightest and it makes all the, the high up areas the darkest and that's essentially how I've worked that there. It's probably not completely accurate but as you can see it gives you a nice kind of succulent burger there so let's come out of, uh, come out of that mode there. Um, now again the one thing that's a little bit weird on this is the cheese is kind of clipping through the surface of the burger at some points. That's just because of the displacement map. Um, one way you could get away with that is by maybe clicking on the cheese and adding a solidify modifier and then just bumping up the thickness until you don't see that um, those holes in the cheese again. But again you're changing the geometry of the object, you're changing a few things, so you might not want to do that. Um, probably better just to maybe uh, just scale some, some things down or so, or even sculpt some things in and tweak those. So let me just take off those solidify modifiers, get rid of those. Um, and that's pretty much just what I've done there. So that's just a quick breakdown of those textures. Um, if I was doing this on my own, um, I would also tweak the bottom of the bun, I would tweak the inside of the bun. Um, again, like I said, the cheese I would make sure is right on top of the burger itself, as you can see just here. Uh, the way that's kind of attached right on there. In fact, I would maybe even attempt, well maybe not in Blender, but maybe in Substance Designer, I would maybe attempt to actually have one object that was a burger and have the cheese actually as um, a, another layer of the texture in such a way that I could maybe have a slider for slices of cheese and the more slices I had, the thicker the layers of cheese get. There's a lot of things you can do in Substance Designer that you can't do in uh, Blender. Um, but I'll see the textures here are probably a good starting off point for maybe modifying this scene and making it a little bit nicer. So I hope that's been a big help to you and if anyone else wants some feedback on any of their models or their textures or anything like that, um, just drop me a message and um, I'll be glad to.